Okay, hello everyone, thanks for coming. My name is Zoltán Boroknagy, and me and my colleagues, Peter Rózsa and Noemi Paptakács, will talk about uh, icebergs, uh, impalas, flight operations, and table maintenance uh, capabilities. Okay, the agenda of this talk, I will give you a quick historical background uh, about uh, the legacy hive table format. Uh, then I'm also going to give you a quick introduction to Apache Iceberg and Apache Impala. Then Peter will take over and he will talk about the role level modifications like the delete, update, and merge statements. Then Noemi will continue with the table maintenance operations, the drop partition, optimize, and rollback and expire snapshot operations. Okay, let's start with the historical background. So what were the legacy uh, hive tables? So basically, these were the simplest things that you can imagine. If you had a folder on a distributed file system, and if you have put uh, similar data files into that folder, then there you have it. Uh, you could have your table. Uh, the data files need to have the same schema, which means they had uh, the same columns, and they were also in the same format which means they were all text files, or parquet, or ORC. And this simplicity is very good for interoperability, because it was very easy for compute engines to interoperate between each other, because if they were able to write the data files or read the data files, then they were able to uh, interact with the tables. And OK, so you have one table. But obviously, you would need to have multiple, many more tables in your system. And here comes the high beta store uh, in the picture. So the high beta store uh, is the source of information if you want to know what kind of tables you have in your system. The tables are also organized into databases. And for each table, the high beta store can tell you where you can find them in the file system. And what is, that, uh, what is the schema of your table? And what is the file format? Uh, the tables are using. It things a tiny bit more complicated than that because you could also partition your table. For example, in this example, uh, the table is partitioned by year. Uh, this means that under the table directory, you have this year equals 2023, and also you can imagine that you can have uh, other uh, year partitions. <coughs> and also these partitions can be partitioned further so the year partition can be partitioned further by months. And also in the months partitions, you could have the day partitions. The high meta store also stored information about the partitions, like where you can find them, and also some extra information. <clears throat> OK, but this simplicity comes with some uh, shortcomings, because if you uh, wanted to do more advanced uh, um, operations on your tables, it was, wasn't really feasible with Hive tables. For example, there were no ACID operations. Or, or you, could, you could have an atomic operation if you were able to execute it via an atomic file system operation. For example, uh, you can atomically insert data files into a single partition. That's an atomic operation. But you cannot insert data files to multiple partitions because you cannot do it with a single file system operation. <coughs> Uh, row level modifications were also not really feasible because you had to rewrite uh, all the uh, data files. Uh, Peter will talk more about this. A small file issue is hard to tackle uh, with this, uh, with the old Hive tables. Noemi will delve uh, into this. The scheme evolution, like changing your columns, uh, was also not really feasible. And operations like rollback or, or time travel uh, was not uh, possible because the system does not store the states, the historical states of your table. Partitioning is very inflexible. Only value-based partitioning is supported. And this, in this example, when we have the your partition, uh, you can imagine that it works the following way. Like you have a timestamp column, but you want to partition your data based on the component of that timestamp column. Which means if there is a user who wants to insert data to your table, they need to manually extract the year component of the timestamp and manually add it to the insert statement. <clears throat> and also, if you wanted to write uh, efficient queries, 
you manually had to add the partition predicates to your query statement. Otherwise, you would end up with uh, full table scans. Also, since the partition layout is coming from the uh, file hierarchy, from the directory hierarchy, it is not really feasible to change the partitioning of the table because you have to rewrite everything. <coughs> so here comes Iceberg to the rescue. Iceberg is a new generation table format for huge data sets. So it defines what metadata is stored about the tables, how this metadata is stored, and how the data files can be organized on the file system. And as for the interoperability, uh, Iceberg also comes with a Java library, which means that compute engines can use this Java library to easily interact and interoperate with the Iceberg tables. Okay, so here is the anatomy of the Iceberg table, <coughs> of one Iceberg table. Uh, at the bottom, you can see the data files. In Iceberg tables, you, uh, you can have uh, data files with you know, three different formats is supported, like Parquet. You, you can have Parquet files, ORC files, and Avro files. <coughs> but the secret source of Iceberg uh, resides here in this blue area. This is the Iceberg metadata layer. This is a hierarchical a structure of, uh, of, uh, of metadata files. At the, uh, at the root of this hierarchy, there is this metadata file, which is just a simple JSON file. It contains a schema of your iceberg table, the partitioning layout, and it also has a pointer to the current data snapshot of your iceberg table. And following that pointer, you can discover the current state of your table. Uh, you can see that this table went over uh, multiple modifications, so you can see the historical states of your table. And from the current metadata file, you could also reach the earlier snapshots of your table, which means you can do time travel queries. <coughs> okay, so with this metadata layer, uh, Iceberg supports quite advanced functionalities like ACID operations with uh, snapshot isolation. Uh, it's uh, possible to change the schema of your table. You can add new columns, rename columns, restructure columns. <coughs> Uh, partitioning is much more flexible, so not only value-based partitioning is available, but transform-based partitioning is available, which means if I follow the earlier example, then you had the timestamp column, you can tell Iceberg that, okay, you want to partition your table based on applying a year partition transform on your timestamp column, <coughs> and Iceberg and the query engine will do that for you, which means if you want to insert data into your table, you don't need to manually extract the year component. When you query your table, you don't need to manually add the partition predicates. And still, things will be uh, very efficient. <coughs> okay. uh, Iceberg also allows you to change the partitioning of your table without rewriting the existing data files, which means if you change the layout, then the new data uh, will be inserted corresponding to the new layout. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Time travel queries are also possible because you can uh, also reach the earlier states of the table. <coughs> but the focus of this talk is the role level modifications and table maintenance operations, but Peter and Noemi uh, will talk about the details. Okay, let's have a few slides about uh, Apache Impala. So Apache Impala is a distributed uh, database engine. It has an um, MPP style architecture, MPP, MPP means massively parallel processing architecture. And that means uh, Impala has a coordinator component, so you can pass SQL query statements to this coordinator. The coordinator does the parsing and the planning of this query statement with the help of Impala's catalog D, uh, daemon, uh, which loads the table metadata and caches the table metadata uh, from uh, from other components like the high meta store and the storage systems. <coughs> okay, once Impala did the planning, uh, it does the scheduling, which means that it spreads the uh, query execution to the backend executors. The backend executors read the data from uh, typically from a distributed storage system like HDFS, Ozone, S3, and so on. They also execute the <coughs> Uh, the database operators 
which means the join operators, the aggregation operators, the analytic functions, and so on. And after the query execution is done, the results are flowing back to the coordinator, and the coordinator passes the results back to the user. <coughs> okay, Impel is a hybrid project, which means some parts of it is written in Java. The parts that are uh, do the planning and, and parsing, <coughs> and these are the parts that interact with the Iceberg library. <coughs> As I mentioned, Iceberg has a Java library, and Impala has a C++ based backend, which means for query execution we don't use the Iceberg library, so we are using Impala's very own uh, uh, file scanners and, and other operators. <coughs> <coughs> Impala is highly optimized for query performance, so it caches everything that it can, and also does runtime code generation via LLVM to speed up the queries, and in the past it had limited write capabilities, but with the help of Iceberg, uh, we could add a lot of improvement on that front. Okay, some more background information. Uh, Impala is quite major, uh, major project which means it, uh, it can interact with various storage systems, like HDFS, Ozon S3, as I mentioned. It supports different file formats, Sparky, ORC, Avro, JSON. Supports different authentication methods. It also has uh, fine-grade uh, author, uh, authorization policies, like row, row filtering and column masking, with the help of Apache Ranger. <coughs> Admission control uh, to limit the number of queries that are concurrently running. And Impala also has spilling operators, so you can define memory limits for Impala, and Impala will execute the queries in, in that memory limit. If it would like to allocate more memory, it would spill out uh, data to disk and that more functions. Okay, that's about the historical background, and let me hand over to Peter about the rollable modification. Okay, so let's talk about the role of our modifications. So first I would like to talk about the modification techniques, merge on read and copy on write. And after that I will talk about the delete, update and the merge statements and how we implemented them. So first, uh, I would like to compare the merge on read approach and the copy on write. So merge on read is just uh, tracking the deletes in a separate delete file. So basically we are writing deltas. So when we have uh, an update, uh, we are writing uh, which uh, rows should be uh, deleted from the data set. And uh, when we are uh, reading back our uh, data, we will combine the delete files and the data files. Uh, this approach uh, is good for frequent small modifications. It has a low write amplification and has a high read amplification, which means that uh, we can do the frequent uh, small modifications uh, with lo low cost, but uh, at the end, if we have a lot of these small uh, updates, at the end, uh, our read will uh, slow down. And the other approach is copy and write, which is basically rewriting the old data files, uh, and as we rewrite them, we remove the uh, unneeded uh, rows. Uh, this approach is uh, uh, useful if you would like to do uh, infrequent large modifications, and it has a high write amplification and has no read amplification, as the removed rows are, are not in the data set anymore. About the deletes, mm, there are two uh, approaches for them as well. So the first one is position delete. Position delete is uh, a fixed file uh, where we have a schema about a file name and the position. So when we are uh, executing a delete statement, we filter out which row uh, should be uh, removed from the data files. We uh, write down the file pass where we found the row and the position where exactly the row is uh, located in the file, and we write down these uh, informations in the separate file. To do this, we first have to load the data files, but uh, this uh, solution gives us a more uh, efficient reads. The other solution, the equality delete, is a bit different, so um, in this case, we basically um, writing down uh, predicates, and these predicates are evaluated as, uh, as filters during the uh, reading. So this is the, the slowest, uh, slowest path. 
uh, for Impala, we uh, choose to implement uh, our solutions first with the merge or read approach, and uh, currently we can read position deletes and equality deletes, and we are writing positional deletes. So let's check the delete statement. So our delete statement is basically uh, rewrite to an insert statement, and to uh, implement this uh, solution, first we have to expose uh, the icebergs delete uh, sorry, the icebergs uh, position delete table. It's a virtual table, and we have to expose the uh, two uh, two columns, the input file name and the file uh, position as well. So um, our implementation, um, as I already mentioned, is rewrites rewriting the uh, delete statement into an insert into statement where we are targeting the position delete virtual table, and we are writing down the file name and the file position. So about reading the delete files, uh, Impala has a short history how we uh, can handle the reading. So first we had a simple anti-join between the data and the delete records, and we did uh, a broadcast scanning, and after that uh, we created the v2join operator specific, specifically for Iceberg. This uses uh, shuffling during the joins, and now we have the uh, most advanced solution, the directed uh, distribution uh, mode, where we uh, are reading uh, which uh, delete row is, uh, so we are tracking uh, each delete row and we route them to the uh, scanned uh, delete, uh, sorry, data files and we can match them we, and we don't have to, uh, we don't have to send every delete records to every uh, exchange node. So about the update statement, the update statement has the same uh, uh, rewrite based uh, solution. So uh, with the update, we have a result set where we list the current, uh, all, all of the uh, columns from the table and the uh, modified value as well. And this uh, result set is um, getting persisted as uh, a new data. So. Uh, as we can see, this selected statement contains the columns and the input file name and the file position, and this result set is uh, routed down to the uh, things. The uh, Impala's data things are basically the writers that uh, write data files and uh, delete files. And before implementing the update statement, we only had just uh, a simple data sync at the end of the plan, and uh, during the implementation of the update statement, we made it uh, possible to have multiple data things uh, at the same time. So uh, it allowed us to implement the update statement, which is writing uh, delete rows and uh, the data rows as well at the same time. So let's go to the uh, merge statement. Merge statement combines the efforts of the uh, insert statement, the update statement, and the delete statement as well. And it has the same approach as uh, how we uh, implemented the update statement, but we have uh, multiple uh, other things as well. So it's basically a two-part uh, operation. So first we uh, are creating a row uh, where we scan the target columns, the source columns, and we indicate whether the target or the source, source column is present. And we also scan the target's position information, so the file name and the, the position of the row. And after that, in the second part, we evaluate the cases. So as in this uh, uh, example, we can see that there are two uh, when match, when not match cases. So we evaluate these cases on every rows. And after the case evaluation, we decide the action uh, that will happen with the row. So uh, in these cases, if there is an update statement, we will have to write an update, uh, sorry, uh, delete file and uh, data file. If we have an insert, then we can write just uh, the data file, and if we have a delete, then we have to write a delete file. So uh, for uh, achieving this, we have to uh, create a new sync as well. The merge sync is a specialized multi-data sync, which contains an insert sync and a delete sync, and as I uh, already mentioned, uh, based on the uh, merge action, the data sync will route the rows to, the, um, to, to their uh, respective syncs. And I would like to give the microphone to Noe. Thank you. 
to ensure high performance after all level modifications, Impala supports the following solutions for iceberg tables. Optimize table to compact the table, drop partition to remove selected partitions, rolling back the table to a previous known state, and expire snapshots. Frequent modifications lead to decreased performance degradations over time. The main motivation behind table maintenance is to address this issue. It has multiple root causes. The most well-known is probably the small files problem. If the table's content is stored in multiple, uh, many small files, uh, the engine has to um, spend most of its time with IO operations instead of actually processing the data. If we have uh, the same amount of data stored in bigger files, it not only speeds up uh, query execution, but also saves us disk space thanks to the high comp uh, compression rate in the modern data file formats like Apache Parquet. Frequent modification also lead uh, to uh, accumulated deletes files over time that contribute to uh, read performance degradation because they have to be merged on read. Uh, each modification also uh, creates new manifest files that also, contrib um, that also accumulate over time. Another use case when table maintenance is necessary, when we have to uh, remove uh, data permanently from the table. With the merge on read strategy, uh, the deleted records are actually physically still in the file system, and if one has to comply with uh, regulations like GDPR, these uh, data have to be uh, removed uh, physically from the disk. This also, uh, um, re uh, this also speeds up query execution, compacts the table, because less records have to be stored and read. And if we suspect that the table is corrupted, Iceberg uh, provides us a convenient way to restore the table to known good state. The optimized table statement um, addresses the small files problem, and not only that. It also merges delete files and uh, rewrites the entire table according to the latest uh, schema and partition spec. As a result, not only the data files are compacted, but the new snapshot has a more organized metadata layer with less manifest files. Which means that uh, queries are now more performant. Okay, the table is uh, compacted now, but if we continue to update it regularly, uh, the performance will degrade over time again. Therefore, we need uh, to uh, execute compaction uh, time to time. This can be achieved by scheduling uh, maintenance jobs. However, write operations are generally expensive, so rewriting the ta entire table each time is not feasible. With the file size threshold megabytes parameter, optimized table can be parameterized to rewrite only the smallest files, those that contribute most to the small files problem. If we want to delete entire partitions, we can do it with uh, issuing alter table drop partition statement. It allows selective partition removal based on any, even complex predicates. It also, it also supports partition transforms. Iceberg uh, writes a new snapshot with each table modification. Therefore, uh, the old table state is available via the old uh, snapshots. If we suspect or know for sure that our table became corrupted, we can reset it uh, to a non-good state by executing a rollback. The snapshots uh, accumulate over time, and uh, this uh, causes uh, the metadata uh, of the table to explode. If we are certain that we no longer need uh, um, the old snapshots, we can uh, remove them by issuing alter table execute expire snapshots command. It deletes data files that are no longer referenced from the new snapshots, and also reduce the size of table metadata. In the end of the day, we can conclude that Impala gained advanced features thanks to the Iceberg integration, 
row level modifications are now possible with asset guarantees. Table maintenance features ensure table health and high performance on the long run. Thank you for your attentions. <laughs>